Hallucinations are different from dreams. Um, they occur in the waking state, and you have a, a critical consciousness which, which can observe them. When you're in a dream, you are totally immersed. You are oft, often part of the dream. You can't stand outside the dream and see it happening. A hallucination, you, you, you suddenly look, what, what's that? You listen, a hallucination, you sniff. Um, uh, a hallucination appears, is outside. Uh, there is often the thought that it is, um, emanates from the outside because you can't attribute it to, your, to yourself. You say, I, I didn't intend it, I can't control it. Where's it coming from? The term hallucinations, um, although it goes back to the 16th century, was given its present medical connotation around 1830, 1840, um, and is not too popular with people, whereas terms like apparitions and phantoms and ghosts uh, are, are, are more acceptable. In, in the latter part of the 19th century, there was a great interest at all levels in apparitions and spiritual experiences. There was a proliferation of mediums, of seances. There was talk about telepathy and clairvoyance um, and, um, uh, and a wish to try and understand these and related phenomena scientifically. In earlier days, one might have uh, heavenly or, or hellish uh, transmitters and as the 19th century became more secular I think to some extent these were replaced by um, uh, by sp discarnate spirits of one sort or another including the spirits of the dead two enormous volumes one called phantasms of the living uh, um, by several members of the Society for Psychical Research and another book called Human Personality and its Survival After Bodily Death. Um, these enormous books came out. They're between them, there are about 3,000 pages of wonderful, careful descriptions of apparitions and phantoms, um, uh, all of which are interpreted in spiritual terms but all of which I think need to be reinterpreted in, you know, in, in, in uh, psychological and physiological terms. Bereavement hallucinations, which are quite common, there have been studies suggesting that, um, especially in, uh, if there have been long happy marriages, the death of, of the wife or the husband may be followed in 30% of cases by visual or auditory hallucinations, faces or voices. Many husbands and wives will talk with their hallucinated spouses in a way which one would think is, is quite mad, but, uh, but it, may, it may be adaptive and okay. Monsters and aliens and angels and devils uh, and goblins and fairies um, um, all manner of strange creatures are common in hallucinations. Uh, for example, there is a very specific form of hallucination called Lilliputian hallucination. And here you may see tiny people um, moving around. Uh, these almost never inspire fear. They tend to inspire curiosity and, and amusement. Um, but uh, one is struck by how many little people there are, elves, sprites, fairies, imps, trolls, leprechauns, you know, all of them have a different sort of cultural colouring. I think people probably see leprechauns in Ireland and, and troll, trolls in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Norway. One colleague of mine speaks about the, the ominous numinous. And of course, you have a hellish hallucination in, in nightmares. In a nightmare, you're awake, 
or rather there's a strange dissociated uh, sense in that you still have the paralysis of sleep, of REM sleep and the hallucinations and yet you are awake and, and aware of your room. Uh, but also your room uncannily changed by, by some horrible presence uh, which is coming nearer and, and may come and sit on your chest and squeeze the breath out of you. So-called out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences are extremely elaborate forms of hallucination um, which can sometimes occur in various medical conditions. If there's a cardiac arrest or arrhythmia, uh, they may be induced by drugs and they convey an overwhelming feeling of reality, um, which I want to say, I've never had one of these, but it cannot be easy to resist. Right. Uh, I'd like one of these to happen to an old Jewish atheist and skeptic like myself. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and um, see, see who will win. Um, I, 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 th I think I want to, to, to say a little bit more. Please, please. Yeah. Um, the um, a reason why I dislike reference to spiritual or or or, um, or astral or ethereal um, realms is that I think these may deflect people's attention from the here and now and from nature. Um, it seems to me that the natural world from atoms to stars and, and especially the world of life is, is full of, of wonder of all sorts.